This interview is part of the History Heard project. The content of this interview may be used for historical research. However, no part of the video itself may be reproduced without the express written permission of an authorized representative of History Heard or Eva Shaw. Today is January 10th, 2010 at 2 p.m. This is an interview with Eva Shaw in Sarasota, Florida. She was born on November 11th, 1922 in Berlin, Germany. And anyway, I went into this school but I just want to tell us with Crystal Knight. First of all, my father uh, traveled all over Germany and also abroad, and he sold whole, worked for a factory or had a factory, depending upon what year it was, selling ladies' hats wholesale, because at that time every woman wore a hat, you know, there was no such thing as not wearing a hat. And it was, it was very popular. And uh, my father couldn't work anymore. After Crystal Night, my father could not work anymore. And, you know, initially they had all money and all that to keep in our apartment, but eventually they lost it all and uh, because he couldn't work anymore. And on Crystal Night, um, my father, we didn't hear, I, we didn't have, we had a radio probably, but we didn't hear that it was, uh, that Crystal Knight started the night before. So the next morning, my brother went up, and I wasn't in the school anymore. I just stopped shortly before I tell you how that happened. And um, so my brother took his bicycle, and it was quite a distance, and he went to school with his bicycle. And he went eventually also to the same Jewish school. It was for boys and girls. And uh, so it, when he got there, one of the t couple of teachers were standing by the door and they chased all the students who got to school because they didn't know that Crystal Night had started. The next morning was Crystal Night also, you know, and they sent them home and he did get home safely. And my father went on a bus. To, at that time already, the Jewish people did nothing else anymore. They couldn't do much else but to try to get out of Germany and they tried desperately for people in other countries to give them visas, and in America it was called an affidavit, was the initial um, permission that you could start to get your immigration papers ready, and then they got visas when they were able to go. So he was on a, on a public bus, and he didn't know that the synagogues were burning. All the synagogues were burning. There was not a single, single synagogue left. You know what a synagogue is? It's a Jewish temple. And uh, synagogue were also, synagogue were temple. And they were all burning. But when he was on the bus, it was the most scary thing, going into the city. We didn't, we lived in a suburb. Going into the city, and he fortunately got home again. And my brother, fortunately, got home again. And then, of course, the Nazis started coming and they were trying to arrest. And they were looking for my, oh, it was my birthday. It was the 9th of November. And my birthday was, is the 11th. And nothing happened the first couple of days. And all the Jews have to, had to register. Wherever you lived, when you moved, you had to register again because the Nazis had to know with the police exactly where every single Jew was located so that they could find them in a hurry. So uh, we were registered and all Jews were registered. So my father, they, uh, they hadn't looked for my father yet. And I still was celebrating. Birthday in Germany was the biggest holiday of the year. <laughs> and, you know, and of course I couldn't get many presents anymore because my parents were getting less and less money and getting more and more worried how they're going to get out of Germany. But I still, we used to have a birthday table where all the birthday presents, whatever you got, were on a table. Like when you have a wedding today, I think sometimes they display the wedding gifts. Well, we always, always disturb, uh, displayed the, the um, birthday gifts. So my mother said, let's take all whatever I got, and I don't remember what I got, there wasn't that much anymore, throw it in the closet that when anybody comes in, they get very excited, they'll take it away. and. You know, so my mother said, throw everything into the closet. And my father left 
the first day that after when Crystal and I started and the Nazis came to uh, take people away and they would have definitely taken him. And uh, what happened was that they had a friend, a Jewish friend, whose husband was killed in a, a motor vehicle accident two years ago before Crystal Night. And so there was just a woman in the house and the Nazis knew that there was no man in the house. And in Germany, at that time, they were not looking for women that came later. But so my father and three other men went to this lady. I mean, I've taken a terrible chance because we didn't know that this was going to happen. But they took a chance on it that uh, the Nazis wouldn't ring the bell, and they didn't. And that's how my father escaped, and he was there, I don't know, a few days. And my mother even went there and brought him a clean shirt every day because at that time he was used to wear a clean shirt, you know, and nothing happened. And that's how my father was saved. And I had a friend who, a boyfriend, but I mean, it was just a, a friend, okay? We were, I was afraid to kiss him <laughs> to give you an idea what kind of a friend it was. But he, his mother and father lived in the same town in which my mother was born. And there things were much worse because when you live in a small town, it's much easier to find all the Jewish people than when you live in a place like New York City or Berlin. Mm -hmm. So he, his parents sent him to Berlin to my parents and they said he didn't live with us, but he my mother took care of him, he had an apartment somewhere, and so that he would be out of the way. And he went to the, have you ever heard of the Old School? No, you did Old Old School is a Jewish organization which is all over the world and very strong in America. And they trained people who needed for teachers and mechanics and plumbers and any kind thing. And he went to that school. And on my birthday, he came to visit me because it knew, knew it was my birthday. And so he was in my house. And when the Nazis were going around, but we didn't know. But as Frank had said, not all Christian people or non-Jewish people, Catholic people, whatever, uh, were Nazis, you know, but they had to be very careful. So downstairs in our building was somebody who I don't know what religion she was, but she wasn't Jewish, and my parents had done good things to her and so on. So she started yelling up the stairs, they're coming, they're coming, go, the, go, down, back, go down the back door. In Germany, every apartment house had a back door with stairs. So he was in my house, and they would have taken him because he was my age. He was, seven, or Frank's age, he was 17. So he ran down the backstage, and that's how he was saved. I mean, they were also good German people, I want you to know that, mm -hmm. but the majority went for Hitler, you know. So that's how the, he left. And he got safe. I don't know where he went to, he got safe. But anyway, that was that.